desperate and hungry for American leadership. But Sean, it starts with a, a vision of America as playing a unique role in the world. This president, I think when he leads from behind, when he criticizes America, he doesn't embrace American exceptionalism the way that you and I do. We understand that America is different. America is special. We are unique, and we're unabashed to say so. It's not arrogance to say that we are a special country and that we are going to protect our interests and our allies, and we're going to back that up. Here's the irony. President Reagan understood that. He stared down the great evil of the time, communism, and won the Cold War without firing a shot. He deployed troops less frequently than his predecessors or his successors. Weakness it actually is a provocative to evil. You don't beat evil with weakness. You don't beat evil with concessions. You don't beat radical Islam by giving them more territory, giving them more money. You beat evil by strength. This president doesn't understand that. We need to fight radical Islam diplomatically, militarily, culturally. Culturally, this president barely gets it diplomatically. He's not doing it militarily. He doesn't certainly get it culturally. Do we need to fight back for those cities that Americans shed their blood on? Mosul, Ramadi, Fallujah, Tikrit? Three things. One, we absolutely need to be arming and training and working with the Kurds. They've been doing great, had great success in Kobani. They're defending Christians and other religious minorities. The combination of allied airstrikes and, and Kurdish forces has been very successful. Secondly, we have Sunni allies that are willing to help us if they thought we were committed to victory. They don't want to go in there and beat ISIS to help Assad and help Iran. Remember the famous red line. It meant nothing, and to them, that had consequences. Third, this president, he's the only commander-in-chief who tells our enemies what we won't do. Sends an authorization of the use of military force, says three-year ban, no three-year deadline, no ground troops. Why in the world would we put political handcuffs on our military planners? As commander-in-chief, I'd say, give me a plan for victory. It's wrong to send troops in harm's way without the resources, the support, the plan they need to get the job done. We now have had two wars that Americans have shed their blood in. Vietnam, 58,000 lives lost, nearly 5,000 in Iraq and Afghanistan, only to give up that land because the war gets politicized in Washington. We can't have, I, if you agree with me, I don't think we should ever ask our military to fight and win a city and maybe die in a city that we're going to give back two years later. Well, that's right. Look, Obama failed to get a status of forces agreement done with Iraq. He unilaterally withdrew the troops for a political deadline, and, and as a result, created the void. Remember, he said that al-Qaeda was defeated. This was the JV team, talking about ISIS. ISIS. That was only a little, a year and a half ago. Twice said that he's twice admitted he has no strategic plan. Sean, that's not a gaffe. He was being, now, every time he says that, some administration official says, well, the president didn't mean what he said. Yeah. Here's the bottom line. Peace through strength works. We've got the greatest military in the world. I want them to dominate any potential conflict. The Chinese and others will wage asymmetrical fights against us. Cyber attacks, as we've seen, could be biological attacks, could be a non-state-sponsored attack. 17 million they might have in the latest cyber attack. Well, and our, our federal government is too busy trying to regulate every water pond through this water rule. They're trying, too busy trying to regulate what kind of insurance you've got to buy, too busy telling you what kind of Twinkies or Oreos or microwave popcorn you can eat, yet they don't.